Hey everyone, uh, today I want to share the story of me building the first application with GPT-3. Um, more specifically, it's called ChatGPT-3. And um, it's been all over social media lately. Like everybody's talking about ChatGPT-3. So essentially what it is, it's a chatbot that knows what you said previously and can give you information based off of that. Now, it's been very popular in the coding community although it is not coding specific at all. Like ChatGPT itself is just a bot, like a chatbot. And you can chat to it about pretty much anything, right? It, it is not coding specific, but it does very well at doing coding things. And people have discovered that and used that to their advantage um, in development. Thank you to this guy for also suggesting this video topic. I think it's a good idea. And uh, I tried it out. So the goal for this video that I originally wanted to post instead of this one I'm doing right now is building my first application with uh, GPT-3. And I expected something really good. And what you can see in the background right now is actually me doing the whole process because I, I recorded that video, right? I, I screen recorded and built that and it took me about 40 minutes to get a really basic project set up and running, which is a long time. Right, and uh, the, the premise of the video was I was only gonna use AI for it. So that involves ChatGPT and also GitHub Copilot if GPT-3 couldn't handle stuff, which we will also get to, which at some point it really couldn't. And um, what I found out is there are two main issues with ChatGPT-3. The first one being that ChatGPT-3 is very confident in its answers, regardless of whether what it says is true or not. And I believe that to be quite a big problem because um, when I was asking it for the Prisma code, so the, the goal, what we were building was a shopping cart application. I've done that previously on the channel and the goal was to have a website where you could um, have input fields and put in like onions and you need five onions, click add item that gets added to a database. And you can also delete that from the uh, shopping list when you go to the website. Now with the deletion idea, I've completely scraped that because I just couldn't be bother bothered at the end. It already took me 40 minutes to build this and I was quite frustrated at the end because ChatGPT3 really didn't give the experience that I was anticipating based off of what I saw previously, um, what other YouTubers talked about. And I've also tried out the concept beforehand, obviously, because this was my third attempt at doing this because beforehand ChatGPT really didn't give any good answers and it was pretty much completely useless. And also this is a pretty basic concept, right? So I encountered a lot of errors. One of them being that ChatGPT3 was very confident in the Prisma code that it gave me, while the Prisma code was actually massively outdated. And I've had to ask it three times, um, not necessarily in this video, but also beforehand, um, to actually provide the, uh, like, um, the actual Prisma, not the actual, like the, the current Prisma syntax, because it kept giving me the old Prisma syntax, which doesn't work at all anymore. Um, and that makes no sense to, you know, serve the users. So it sounds very confident, even in answers that are factually or syntactically wrong. And I believe that to be one of the problems that I was facing with chat GPT-3. And if they could get solved, if there was like a, I'm this percent sure in this answer, that would actually help people. And then the second main problem I encountered was that there were a lot of network errors. Now my internet connection is really good and it definitely wasn't my internet connection, but the connection to GPT, I assume it was because a lot of people are trying out this technology at the moment, so it's uh, overloaded and I think that is totally understandable. However, um, when you then retry the query, uh, because that will delete the answer it gave you, right? It, uh, it will write out the answer, but then whenever it encounters a network error, that will remove all the previous text that had answered. Um, so you don't get any of the answer um, if you get a network error. So you need to click try again in GPT-3. However, if you do that, that counts as an additional query, regardless of the query, um, if the query beforehand was aborted due to an error. And the problem that leads to is when you get a lot of network errors, you have to retry again and again. And then it says, um, you are making too many requests. Please try again later. And the later not meaning like in one minute, but much more. Um, so I actually had to switch off of GPT-3 at the end and instead completely rely on GitHub Copilot to get this project done. Um, so the 40 minutes 
um, are not essentially due to GPT-3 being slow, but also to it completely not responding at some points, and so relying to have on a completely different AI. And I think 40 minutes for a project of this magnitude, like this is a really simple project. This is an SQL database with a Prisma ORM in a Next.js application. Like whipping something like this up, even if you've never done it before, shouldn't it really shouldn't take more than like 10 to 20 minutes because it is so basic right you have two input fields a button whenever you click the button the both inputs get added to a database and when you visit the website then the information from the database gets read and served to the user very basic principles maybe can take some junior developers like 20 minutes I, i'd say is a fair amount of time for that um 40 minutes is not reasonable and, but that's also quite comforting, right? Because I, I, I truly think, uh, like with the current state of ChatGPT3, um, I, I truly think that our jobs as developers are not severely threatened. Um, instead, I think ChatGPT3, the main potential lies in something very different. Um, in that being, when you have questions, instead of Googling them and then going through Google Answers, um, you might find the answer on Stack Overflow right away, right? But you might not. And for those cases, ChatGPT3 can be really useful. And I don't think it was ever meant for creating entire code applications from scratch. I mean, evidently, right? It's not really good at that because it provides some outdated syntax. You have to really dig into some of the um, aspects of it because it will just provide you a, a basic overview of the steps otherwise and not very specific things that you need to um, actually do. So in a way, to me, it feels like using GPT-3 as a tool to create entire web applications is kind of misusing it for a purpose that it was never initially meant to be used for. And yeah, that was pretty much my uh, ChatGPT3 experience. It was frustrating, I'll be honest. My third attempt took 40 minutes to get done because um, uh, I was only relying on AI, right? The, the goal was not for me to write any code, which I kind of had to at the end. Um, that's why I also skipped the, uh, the deletion part of the shopping items that you could add to the website. And because that completely relied on me and not on AI, which kind of defeated the purpose of the video. Uh, so instead of uploading that video, that's 40 minutes long of me trying to use ChatGPT3 and failing miserably at it, um, you know, I decided to make this video talking about my experience and uh, what I think GPT is good at and really what it's not meant for. However, at the end, I did manage to get the application up and running, right? So we had a SQL database hosted at Planet Scale, but you could also use MongoDB. And uh, we used the Prisma ORM, which uh, can also be used with MongoDB or Postgres. In my case, that was a cloud MySQL database, but it really doesn't matter. Uh, you can use Prisma ORM with a lot of different ones. And then we had the Next.js app up and running, so uh, there were. it was probably the most, well I say that a lot because it was ridiculously ugly, but it was surely one of the most ugly projects I've ever done because solely because I attributed no value at all to the styling, we didn't even install Tailwind uh, with ChatGPT, even though I'm very sure it's capable of doing that. Uh, I, I just didn't bother at the end uh, with the styling, so we have two very ugly input fields, one button, and so you can enter the um, the name of the shopping item that you want. You can also enter the quantity, then click go, um, or however I called it. And that gets then added to the database. We can see that in the um, Prisma Studio, which is the best feature about Prisma. Like the Prisma Studio, amazing stuff, really good. And um, well, maybe not the best, but it's a really good feature nevertheless. And uh, we could see that in the database. And then whenever you visit the site, the onions in quantity five were shown to the user. And I considered that a success, right? I just couldn't be bothered to go beyond the 40 minutes. Um, I've already gotten severely frustrated with ChatGPT at this point because I had to rely on Copilot, like the rest, for like a whole third of the end of the project. And so it just didn't really matter. But we got it done. Uh, I, I did the experience. I did the thing that everybody is talking about at the moment. I'm happy I did it. Thank you again for the suggestion for the video. I think that was really cool. Um, and yeah, that's my experience. If you've worked with ChatGPT3, I'd be really interested in hearing which use cases you think it's good at, where it really excels, because there are use cases where it's really good, right? And I'd be happy to hear your opinions on that. Thank you very much for watching, 
Um, I'll be happy to hear about your experiences and then I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one and bye bye. Because we call it the same name. There we go. We also need to invoke that and okay, finally. This looks ugly as hell. But I do consider this a success considering how much of a pain working with AI was for this project. I'm gonna do a separate video um, discussing the topic of how AI can really change your development workflow and if it does threaten your job. But as I hope became somewhat obvious from this video, at least with the current state of AI, I don't think it's a threat to your job. If anything, it might be a useful um, tool for you as a developer to sometimes use. Um, but it, but if it takes you, like, this is the time I'm recording, it's uh, 36 minutes, and this is the third attempt I'm doing, and I consider myself an alright developer, okay? It took me 40 minutes to get this very simple project going just with AI. Um, it was never meant to be a replacement for developers, I think, but just a useful tool um, that you can use in addition to your um, problem-solving skills that you uh, have acquired as a developer. Okay, I'm gonna end this project here. This is probably the most ugly and useless project I've ever done, but it wasn't really about the project in the first place, more about um, the experience of working with AI and how that works. Okay, um, I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. I'm gonna see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye-bye.